The year started with the college football playoff, which ended up as a rematch between Alabama and Clemson for the national title. The Crimson Tide took a three-point lead with two minutes left off of a Jalen Hurts touchdown run, but Deshaun Watson brought the Tigers in the end zone with a drive for the ages, giving Clemson revenge over last year's loss. In the Super Bowl, the Falcons looked great early with a 28-3 lead, but Tom Brady rose to the occasion with an epic comeback to force overtime. All it took from there was one drive from the Pats to win Super Bowl number five. In college hoops, Gonzaga and North Carolina had a fierce battle in the national championship, but it was the Tar Heels that were able to win 71-65 and redeem themselves after last year's heartbreaking loss to Villanova. On the ice, the Penguins became the first team in the salary cap era to win back-to-back Stanley Cups, beating the Predators in six games. Sid the Kid was the best player in the series, earning his second Conn Smythe trophy. In the NBA, Kevin Durant got a lot of flack for joining the Warriors, but it paid off as Golden State won the NBA Finals, beating the Cavaliers in five games. Durant was also named the Finals MVP and was quick to clap back at his haters on social media. In the majors, back in 2014, the Astros were dubbed the favorites to win it all this year, and they delivered thanks to a monster effort from World Series MVP George Springer, who hit five home runs in the Fall Classic. Houston prevailed in seven games over the Dodgers, winning their first title in team history. In golf, Sergio Garcia had one of the best stories of the year at the Masters, winning his first career major with a sudden death playoff over Justin Rose. Later in the year, Jordan Spieth went off the beaten path at the Open Championship, but was able to recover by shooting an extraordinary five under on his final four holes to win his third major. He's now only one major short of a career Grand Slam. In tennis, Serena Williams had one of the most impressive performances of the year, winning the Aussie Open while pregnant with her first child. Serena beat her sister Venus in straight sets, and her daughter Alexis Olympia Ohanian Jr. was born eight months later. On the men's side, it may be 2017, but the game was still ruled by Roger Federer. The 36-year-old won the Australian Open in January and followed it up by winning Wimbledon for the ninth time in his illustrious career for his 19th major. Rafael Nadal was able to keep pace by winning the other Grand Slams, including the French Open for the 10th time, which is the most for any player at a single Grand Slam tournament in tennis history. And in the world of MMA, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson made history beating Ray Borg at UFC 216. It was his 11th title defense, giving him the longest championship reign, passing Anderson Silva. That was all of the teams and athletes who have won championships in 2017. But right now, we've got to crown a team of the year. Doyle, let's start with you. I think this is easy. It has to be the New England Patriots. They go out and win another Super Bowl, their fifth. But as far as easy. getting to the Super Bowl, yes, easy. <laughs> They've been to the Super Bowl, folks, nine times. That's more than the Cowboys. That's more than the Steelers. Actually, that's more than any team in the history of the NFL cementing themselves as the gold standard, not just of football, but of all sports. And the way they won, down 28-3. Time running out in the third quarter, and they come back and beat the Falcons. This is easy. That was a phenomenal Super Bowl, but you said it. The Patriots are always in the Super Bowl, so we've seen that time and time again. We expect them to win. Belichick and Brady, one of the best duos ever in the NFL. But what we saw in Major League Baseball with the Houston Astros, we have never seen that before. First time the Astros won the World Series in franchise history. They had the third longest championship drought in the majors, and it ended in dramatic fashion. The offensive explosion we saw from the Dodgers and the Astros, a seven-game epic series. George Springer was phenomenal. I mean, the Astros have to be the team of the year. Clement, I couldn't agree more. The Houston Astros are the team of the year, and this is easy for me. (laughs) Not only is it their first franchise uh, World Series and franchise history, George Springer was on the cover of Sports Illustrated back in 2014. Right. And SI called it. They did. That this would be the year that they win it. And George Springer is the World Series MVP. Like, mind blown. So there's that. And then not to mention everything that happened with the hurricane down in Houston. Great and story. this team comes out. They win a World Series for their city. 
hands down. You can't beat them. And, and it was just a couple of years ago where they were terrible. I mean, they had three straight years where they lost more than 100 games, but they drafted well, got some pieces, added Justin Verlander towards the end of the season. He came in and he was phenomenal. How can you not root for the Astros, Tim, when they have the young studs like a Springer, like a Carlos Correa, and the little man? Jose Altuve, you have to give it up for the little guys. I mean, he's like my height, showing that big things come in small packages. He got the job done. <laughs> they had a great year, and they're not going anywhere. I mean, I think this the start of something, like we've seen in New England, obviously the Patriots have had a great run of success, really a dynasty. I don't think the Astros are far from that because all their talent is so young. And they're all staying there, it seems, for the foreseeable future. Yep. Let us know. Find us on Twitter, at Watch Stadium, who you think the team of the year is. we got the Patriots and the Astros.